weird classes, so I just wanted to go over some things with you. Um, I'm still going to upkeep the classroom website, but you guys probably won't be using it as much. It might be more for your parents than anything. But um, instead of, and remember you can always click here to see what we've done throughout the year, but instead of having the schedule be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday look, it's going to look like this now where it has a matrix of what we're doing day by day. And the thing that you guys are going to care about the most is the materials and the assignment part. So this stuff in the middle. Um, so on Tuesdays, I'll have a live lesson. And on Thursdays, I'll have a live lesson. And then on Friday, I'll have office hours. And my lessons are always going to be from 9 to 9.30. And my office hours are going to be from 9.45 to 10.15. So everything's always going to be in 30-minute slots. And I think a lot of the live lessons are going to be discussions and things like that. So the first day of class, um, you guys can do it one of two ways. Um, you can get into Canvas. And this module that you can't see right now, that'll be probably ready for you on Sunday night. It's ready to go. I just wanted to add some things to it. Um, so each week there will be a module. And um, when you guys click on that, it gives you your Google Slides for the week. So um, I recommend looking at your Google Slide link. I copied and pasted the matrix from the website below. I'll do that every week. Um, and so really all you guys have to do on Monday, it's really super easy. So your Google slide looks like this. Actually, I'm going to minimize that because I only have this set up on part of my screen. And then all you guys have to do on Monday is click on this link and click on this link. And what I'd like for you guys to do when you click on those links is I really want you guys to check out this infographic to look at the history of pandemics, because this is really interesting. This pandemic that we have right now, the COVID-19, is just starting. So we have no idea what it's going to look like in the end. But this, as you can see, is not the first time the world has had a pandemic. So this is not the end of the world, kids. Um, it's not. It's also not looking like it's the bubonic plague or even smallpox. You know, smallpox wiped out so many millions of Native Americans. Um, and the really cool thing is, is we learned a lot from the bubonic plague, which is why we're self-isolating and why we're quarantined um, and all this kind of stuff. Because we know if we isolate, um, we can slow down the virus. Uh, we learned this, look how many years ago we learned that lesson. 1347 to 1351 was the bubonic plague. So um, we learned that forever ago. Follow the rules. It works. Um and you guys can kind of see, you know, from the size of these things that what's going on right now is bad, but it's not the worst that the world's ever seen. So when they say this is the first time this has happened in history, pfft, no, this is not the first time and it won't be the last time. It's just the first time in your life and it's the first time in my mom's life, but she keeps talking about my aunt and uncle that got um, Spanish flu and died from it. Um, and they just had a baby and all sorts of things. And so I didn't know this. My grandpa helped raise that baby. I had no idea. Um, this is also really interesting when you guys scroll down and read through the information. On average right now, what this means is that somebody who gets COVID-19 infects about two and a half people on average. But that's not even the worst virus on here. The measles is which people are not getting vaccinated for, and we're having measles outbreaks, which is bananas. Get your MMR vaccine. I don't know why people think that causes things, but um, I would like for you guys to read through this. That would be awesome. There's really good information, um, but if all you do is end up reading through the infographic and all that kind of stuff, you're fine, okay? Um, after that, I want you guys to watch this video. It's a seven minute long video, but it's one of those videos that I think you guys are going to like. And it gives you the history of pandemics and it goes through and preps you up for the discussion questions that we're going to have on Tuesday. 
And then on Tuesday, we're going to go through these discussion questions uh, where I'm just going to check in with you and see what you guys learned about pandemics, uh, positives of pandemics, because there's positives in everything that we do. We're going to learn a lot from this. The world's going to be different in a lot of ways when this is all said and done. And there's probably going to be a lot of bad ways, but there's probably going to be a lot of really cool things that we learn from this. And I think one cool thing is I think it's going to help jumpstart your schools into better technology in the 21st century. I think the teachers are going to have um, totally different conversations when it comes to technology. And then what questions do you have? Bring your questions about COVID-19 to me because I would like to get those answered. I am sure you guys are sick of hearing about COVID-19. Basically, after this week, So, and then if you are comfortable, share how it's affected you and your family. You do not have to go into all the details, but obviously if you guys want to, you're more than welcome to because this is having a lot of financial hardships on people. I have a friend who's a hairdresser and is out of work for a month and um, she only has 200 bucks in her bank account right now. So she does not have a week or two to get money from the government. Like she needs money now kind of thing. So um, I'm a little worried about her. And then on Wednesday, all I want you guys to do is click and watch this CNN link. It explains what's going on with the bailouts. Um, it's only about three minutes. I'm going to, I might update this link over the weekend. Right now it is Friday at 1.40 p.m. And as of right now, the bailout is not passed. It went through the Senate and went back to the House yesterday. And they were debating it in the Senate last night. And I have not heard um, if they've passed it yet. It's a $2 trillion bailout, so it should take them some time. Americans want this done now because so many of us need money, but $2 trillion is a lot of money, and they better hopefully get it done right the first time. Uh, and then we're, I'm going to have you guys look at the history of bull and bear in the U.S. This is just a picture. It's really cool, though. Um, and it shows you the history of the stock market. If you do not know what a bull market and a bear market is, check that out. This You do not need to know what the stock market is, but the stock market is a really good indicator of how well our American economy is doing. And over the past, uh, as you can see, since about 2010, our, our market has just been going up and up and up. Like It has been rising for a long time. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's been a really good market for almost 10 years and because of this biological thing, it caused it to crash. Um, but as of yesterday, so we dipped down into a bear market recently and as of yesterday, we actually, because of this economy, the news about the bailout, um, our bull market is back officially. But I imagine we're going to see some losses here in the future. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a bit of a crash, but who knows? We might luck out. I don't know. Um, COVID-19 and numbers. If you have not seen this website, this is really interesting. It tells you daily what the COVID-19 numbers are. And if you click around on it, and, that, and as you guys are looking at these graphs, this is a J curve. That's really bad. This is part of the reason you keep hearing people say we need to bring down the curve because J curve means that it's skyrocketing. That would be great if that happened to our economy, um, but not good when it comes to viruses. Uh, yesterday or two days ago, this five it was like only 300,000 some cases. And yesterday morning, I think it was at like uh, 400,000. So this keeps jumping up by hundreds of thousands every day. Um, and do the do the statistics. Take 26,000 divided by 8,026 divided by 585. Um, you'll notice that it's about a 4% death rate. So 96% of the people are recovering right now. But this is ongoing, and we're learning stuff about this every day, so that statistic could change as time goes on. Please do not believe stupid websites as you guys are looking into this stuff. 
Um, there's all sorts of conspiracy theories out there, and a lot of those are wrong. Please do not waste your time looking into the Illuminati and all of that crap. Um, so anyway, you guys can see, wow, this is insane. Last night, we just, we just, um, beat China. Um, yesterday we were at 80,000 cases and now we're at 96,000 cases just between yesterday and today. So we had 11,000 cases just in a day and we are the number one with this virus right now. And if you guys remember, you know, in like the spring break week, we only had like a thousand cases and that was between, um, I know spring break ended, ended on March 13th. So, I mean, that wasn't that long ago, guys. It's been just a couple weeks and look how many cases that we've had. Um, so if you want to click on USA and all this other stuff, you can see it by state. This is why they keep talking about New York because they have 44,000 cases of COVID-19. Yesterday it was only 30,000 some. I have two friends and uh, family members that live there. I have three cousins and an aunt and, um, one of my cousins has three young boys and, um, so I'm worried about the, that family in New York. And then I have a cousin in California. Uh, so Kansas on the list, we're not doing great, but we're not doing bad. We have 202 cases. Um, we have over half the state shut down right now. We don't have a full wide state shut down, but we have about half. And Kansas is also the first state to uh, close schools. I don't know if you guys know that, but we're the first state to do it. And, um, I, I am grateful that our governor made that decision because I was very worried about my 68 year old mother who has Parkinson's and what I was going to do with that because I'd be at risk or exposed nearly every day that I go to work. Um, okay. I want you guys to read through this. Um, ideally read through it on Wednesday, but if you don't, it's okay. Just read through it between Wednesday and Friday. Um, on Thursday, we are going to have, um, another discussion. We're going to review what you guys learned about, uh, COVID-19 and, um, I'm going to answer any questions you have. I'm going to review what you guys learned about the bailout, the history of the stock market, and then I'm going to go into this article. So I'm going to explain why it's really important that you guys record your life right now. So read through this article. I'm hoping you guys do that Wednesday. Um, I'm going to kind of address it on Thursday in the live session. And then um, next week, you guys are going to be hearing from uh, some of my family members and friends. So um, the reason I'm going to have you guys listen to my family members and friends about COVID-19 is because it's going to relate to this article. So next week, you guys are basically going to be deciding how you want to journal your time right now because you guys are eventually going to have your own families and grandkids and all sorts of things. And even if you don't, you're going to have people that you tell about this time period too. I remember my, like I said, my mom growing up and talking about hearing about the Spanish flu from her dad. And um, even though she didn't experience it, it's still stories they tell. This is not going to be something that just goes away. You guys are going to share this as part of your history. You guys are going to make your own primary source. So um, I'll give you guys more details about that, but I want you to be thinking, do you want to write it down? Do you want to blog it? Do you want to do a film? Do you want to make art? Do you want to do a short story? Do you want to do a poem? Do you want to do some haikus? Um, I'm going to have more directions later and more options, uh, but just be thinking, how do you want to document your time? Um, right now I'm choosing to do a journal. I'll show you what mine looks like and I'll show you this again later. But, um, so I started it on, uh, March 11th and I'm trying to do it every day now. I haven't done it yet, but you guys can see, look on the 25th, we were at four, 400,000, 71 and 35. And then it jumped up that much. And I haven't done today's information. And this is, this is today. Where's the link at? I always have a billion links open. 
But anyway, you remember the numbers were at over 500,000 worldwide. Here it is. The world o meter. This is a cool thing. Well, actually, it's not a cool thing because people are getting infected and dying, but it's a cool website. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, 585,000 cases between yesterday and today. That's nuts. Okay. Um, this is the part of the video I need to make sure I cut out because it's boring and I'm messing up. Okay. But before we start making our journals, you guys are going to um, ask my family members some questions. So on Friday, you guys are going to come up with two questions, okay, um, that you can ask my family members. So I'm still putting this together, but this is what the idea is. So on your module, you guys will need to make sure you scroll down and you press next. And this is going to take you to your first assignment that is due by April 7th. Okay, so hopefully you guys do it this Friday and get it out of the way. But you need to think of two to three questions that you could ask my cousin Will from California. Um, I have my cousin Jason from New York and my friend Andrea from New York and my other friend Ayako from New York that are going to be in a Zoom session on April 7th. Um, my cousin Jason, I cannot remember what he does. He is an artist, but he does some job and I'm not for sure what it is, but he lives in White Plains, New York. Um, my cousin Will in California, uh, he used to work for Dropbox, but now I think he, he's like, he graduated from, uh, it's like a really awesome school in Massachusetts. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's one of those Ivy League schools in Massachusetts. It's not Harvard, but it's a really good technology school. And anyway, he used to work for Dropbox, and now I think he made some product. And he is a millionaire, I believe. I don't know. I could just be making this stuff up. But I don't think he has to work anymore because he's made his own money. Um, I have another cousin in Alaska. Her name is Kate. Um... I have a cousin who lives in Spain. Her name is Stephanie. Kate works for the National Forest Service. My cousin Stephanie has her own business in Spain, which is suffering right now. Um, I am going to see if I can get someone from Kenya. Uh, we have a really cool para in Shawnee Heights named Andrew Bradshaw that's going to give you the perspective of China. Um, I may be able to get someone who's currently living in France and has had COVID-19. Um, and then I'm trying to get someone from South Korea and someone from Peru for you guys. Um, but anyway, ask your questions about, you know, what you guys have. Uh, so that way we can get these different perspectives. It's going to help with your journal as well. Just know whatever you have going on, millions have it going on, and most likely you're probably in a better situation than a lot of people. And if you're not, I, I'm so sorry, but you are not alone. Uh, so find a way to be grateful. Find a way to be positive. Um, and then the next thing that we're, you guys are going to do is you're going to reflect. Um, so... This may change a little bit because Mr. Walker and I are seeing if we can combine this because right now I have you guys writing one to two paragraphs explaining how you and your family have been affected by the coronavirus or you just write five sentences about what you learned this week. And I want good sentences. Give me actual stuff that you learned. Don't be like, I learned about the corona or something like that, okay? Give me five pieces of information that you learned. But um, basically, this is going to be your assignment, unless Mr. Walker and I figure out something else. Okay? All right. So let me know if you guys have questions. Don't be afraid to email us. All right. Goodbye.
In Mac OS Mojave, you can record a video, then move the yellow sliders to select the part to keep, click the trim button, bottom right corner of your screen. You can swipe it away to save it for later, or click on it to watch it back or share it. To trim it, click. Your video thumbnail will appear in the bottom right corner of your screen. You can swipe until you click stop in the menu bar. Your video thumbnail will appear in the bottom right corner of your screen. Record whatever happens inside your selected window until you click stop in the menu bar.